There's so much happening around the sixth and seventh trumpets and so much overlap between the two as God brings the day of wrath to completion that almost all of Revelation from this point onwards will focus on that time period. Indeed, it's interesting that God only devotes about five chapters of Revelation to all the seven seals and the first five trumpets combined, but then devotes around ten chapters, double the amount, to the final two trumpets. It's clear that in God's eyes, this is the very centre of end-time prophecy. Everything else has just been leading up to this moment. With that in mind, let's start with the sixth trumpet. Then the sixth angel blew his trumpet, and I heard a voice speaking from the four horns of the gold altar that stands in the presence of God. And the voice said to the sixth angel who held the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great Euphrates River. Then the four angels who had been prepared for this hour and day and month and year were turned loose to kill one third of all the people on earth. I heard the size of their army, which was 200 million mounted troops. Here we're told about four angels who have been bound near the Euphrates River, but who are turned loose to kill a third of the people on the earth. Here's a map to show the region that we're talking about. We can see from this map that the Euphrates passes through three countries, Turkey, Syria and Iraq, and very close to the border of another, Iran. In fact, that border is disputed territory. So there are four countries around the Euphrates and four angels who are bound there. This may not be a coincidence. Indeed, it may suggest that the four angels are the demonic spirit princes over those nations. Remember when Daniel prayed by the Tigris River in Babylon, which is modern-day Iraq? An angel came to him and said, Don't be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your request has been heard in heaven. I have come in answer to your prayer, but for 21 days the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Then Michael, one of the archangels, came to help me, and I left him there with the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. Now I am here to explain what will happen to your people in the future, for this vision concerns a time yet to come. This passage suggests that Satan has stationed demonic spirit princes over each nation of the world. In Daniel's case, when he started praying, God dispatched an angel to see him, but the demonic spirit prince over Persia, which is modern-day Iran, blocked the angel's way, and he required backup from the archangel Michael to push through the blockade. Michael, incidentally, has been stationed over Israel by God, and we know this because later in Daniel we read he is, Michael, the archangel who stands guard over your nation. And since the word archangel can actually be translated as the great prince, it seems that God has established princes over nations too, or at least one nation. The Bible doesn't mention spirit princes, good or evil, over many other nations, only Greece. But if there are, and it's not an unreasonable deduction to make, then the four angels bound at the Euphrates could well be the demonic spirit princes of Turkey, Syria, Iraq and Iran. Since current national boundaries didn't exist when the New Testament was written, we need to be open to the idea that it could include other nearby nations such as Saudi Arabia too. Whoever these four angels are, they are certainly fallen ones. The Bible never describes God's own angels as being bound in any way. The word bound is actually an interesting one. It instantly suggests the idea of being tied up or imprisoned, and indeed the Hebrew word asur can mean fastened or tied. However, it can also mean restricted or forbidden. So when John says that they are bound at Euphrates, it probably doesn't mean that they are imprisoned there. If they were imprisoned or chained, they would have been in the bottomless pit and released during the fifth trumpet. It probably just means that they are currently restricted to operate in that area around the Euphrates. It's a bit like when criminals are under house arrest. They are tagged and restricted from travelling too far from home or from leaving the country. In other words, they have a certain amount of freedom but are bound to a distinct geographical area. These four angels are probably in a similar kind of state, and if they ever do leave the restricted area, they would find themselves in the pit as punishment. Repeating what Jude said, And I remind you of the angels who did not stay within the limits of authority God gave them, but left the place where they belonged. God has kept them securely chained in prisons of darkness, waiting for the great day of judgment. It seems that any angel who disobeys God by moving out with the boundaries of authority he has given them are thrown into the pit. 
John says that when the sixth trumpet is blown, all restrictions on their freedom will be removed and they'll be turned loose to leave the Euphrates area. Effectively, they'll be free to wage war on the whole earth. And unlike the evil spirits from the pit, who are only given authority to torture, these four angels along with their army will be given authority to kill one third of all the people on the earth. That army will be 200 million strong. John describes what it looks like. And in my vision I saw the horses and the riders sitting on them. The riders wore armour that was fiery red and dark blue and yellow. The horses had heads like lions and fire and smoke and burning sulphur billowed from their mouths. One third of all the people on earth were killed by these three plagues by the fire and smoke and burning sulphur that came from the mouths of the horses. Their power was in their mouths and in their tails, for their tails had heads like snakes with the power to injure people. Are the 200 million a spiritual demonic army or are we reading about a modern day war of some kind? Are the horses with heads like lions and smoke billowing from their mouths vivid pictures of evil spirits or are they John's attempts to describe modern war machinery with a first century vocabulary? Opinion is divided on this, but since spiritual events dictate physical events, I suggest that it's probably both. An army of 200 million demons could take control of 200 million human beings and cause them to wage war on the earth's inhabitants. We have further evidence to support this theory later in Revelation 16.13 where the Bible makes it clear that demonic spirits will be primarily responsible for gathering the nations of the earth together for the climactic battle of Armageddon. Oftentimes world leaders make decisions and go to war under the influence of demons without realizing it and that's why we should pray for them. To put this into context though, the Normandy landings on D-Day in 1944, one of the biggest military operations in history up until that point, only involved 156,000 American, British and Canadian troops. In 1991, the 34 nation coalition that liberated Kuwait from Saddam Hussein's Iraq during the Gulf War was comprised of just 1 million troops. So you can see that the world has never been remotely close to witnessing an army of 200 million. Indeed it's thought that an army of 200 million would cover an area 1 mile wide and 85 miles deep. With a population of 1.35 billion, China is currently the only single nation in the world that can muster those kind of numbers. Therefore many people have tried to pin this event on them. This was particularly true during the 20th century when communism was on the rise and any nation subscribing to it was believed by the West to be an insidious threat. Today however, in a post-Cold War world, it seems incredibly unlikely that the Chinese would suddenly decide to annihilate a third of the human population. There's no ideological reason for them to do this. They also have no discernible connection to the Euphrates River. The Chinese hypothesis seems to exist purely because of their size and because people tend to view prophecy through the lens of current events. As the Cold War has moved from current event to historical event, so is the chances of this theory making much sense. And I guess this highlights our problem in identifying the army in general. Revelation is progressive. In other words, it becomes clearer the closer we get to the events taking place. What looked like the answer to previous generations doesn't look at all like the answer today. And even from this distance, it's incredibly difficult to predict how geopolitical tensions will change in the years ahead. For example, everyone agrees that 9-11 fundamentally changed the world. But who could have predicted it? and who could have accurately predicted the precise consequences. The economic collapse in 2008 changed the world too, but who knew it was coming? Likewise, an event could happen tomorrow that could instantly change our view of the sixth trumpet. Suddenly something that seems hidden or obscure will come clearly into view. What's just as likely to happen is that over the coming years, lots of small incremental changes will happen and the sixth trumpet will reveal itself gradually. We should therefore stay watchful to discern what we see. However it comes about, the event will be easily recognised by those who live through it, primarily because of the enormous death toll. A third of humanity being wiped out will obviously represent the worst single loss of human life in all history. A number that, allowing for population changes and the loss of life from the previous seals and trumpets, will probably be in the region of 1.5 to 2 billion people. Indeed, some have estimated that when the deaths of the fourth seal are added to the Christian genocide of the fifth seal and then added to the worldwide slaughter of the sixth trumpet, 
as much as 50% of the world's population or more will have been annihilated by this time. At today's population levels, that would be something in the order of 3.5 billion people, the equivalent of the entire populations of China, India, USA, Indonesia, Brazil and Pakistan combined, all gone. This is going to be simply unmistakable. I will put forward one theory about the 200 million because as this series is being produced and in the light of the rest of biblical prophecy which we're going to get to, it seems to be by far the most plausible and even obvious explanation. Since these four angels are bound in the Islamic heartlands of the Middle East and since the devastation originates there but affects the whole earth, the sixth trumpet may represent an Islamic attack. The Pew Forum reports that Muslims currently make up 1.6 billion of the Earth's population, that's 20%, so it's easily conceivable that they could raise an army of 200 million from that. Indeed, only 12.5% of their number would be needed to create such an amount. We also know that they have the motivation to mount such an attack, as there are many verses in the Quran and Hadith that tell Muslims to fight the unbelievers unceasingly until the whole earth is subdued under the rule of Islam. In fact, let's pause here to take a look at some of those verses.